Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Paul. Here with another video, <laughs> obviously. Uh, geography now. We're on to Bolivia. Uh, Bolivia, man, the trend continues. I don't know much at all about Bolivia, but I'm sure my head will be filled with lots of knowledge after this video. And yes, so let's let's get to the excitement, guys. Bolivia. Mm -hmm. flight. <laughs> oh, he's a dissect the flight right away. We already know that, so let's check it out. Before I do, please do like and subscribe, guys. Please and thank you. And yes. Where are we going? Here we go. This guy's name is Paul, by the way. Hey, Jagger peeps. So I actually had the pleasure of going to Bolivia a couple of years ago. So in this episode, you're going to see some of the great footage that I took with my crappy 2010 Panasonic camcorder. Sweet. It's time to learn geography now. Oh, we are so gonna bo live it up in Bolivia. Ha! <laughs> Flag time. <laughs> All right, another flag that has a lot of things to look at. Let's see if we can do this faster than Belize's flag, shall we? First of all, the flag Good. is a horizontal tricolor flag with three bands, red, yellow, and green, with the coat of arms in the center. The red represents, once again, say it with me, the blood shed for those who fought for the country. The yellow represents Good. the wealth of resources, and the green represents the richness of natural areas and hope. The coat of arms is a little more complex. First of all, in the center is a cartouche image of Mount Potosi, with the sun rising over it, with a llama, a palm tree, and a bale of wheat representing the nation's resources surrounded by a blue border with 10 stars representing the nine departments and the 10th former province Litoral which was taken by Chile in the 1800s. Finally you have the name of Bolivia above. Then you have six Bolivian flags on either side once again making Bolivia one of the few countries that has a flag with miniature versions of its own flag on its own flag. Then you have the four muskets in the back with two cannons in front representing the struggle and fight for independence. On top of the cannons you have a Phrygian hood and an Acts representing liberty and freedom. On top of everything, you have a condor and laurel branches that stand for peace and the willingness to defend. Keep in mind, you also might see this flag a lot in Bolivia, also known as the Huipala, which is also kind of seen as a national symbol, but could also be referenced towards the indigenous people of Bolivia, and more specifically the Aymara people, which make up a huge population demographic of the country. Did we do it? Did we beat Belize? Yeah! All right, yeah. Bolivia, you are in. I always think it's like a. So far, it seems like the smaller countries are the ones that have, like, everything going on on the flag, you know? And then you have, like, the giant countries that, you know, I'm not going to say plain, but more, like, simple, I guess. Not plain, simple. And so, yeah. I don't, I don't know where I was going with that, but... Uh, let's continue. <laughs> All right, Bolivia, you are in the lead as the most complex flag that we have done here on Geography Now. Congrats. <laughs> Bolivia is a very interestingly situated country, and to kind of understand it, you have to travel back in time. But later, not now. First off, today Bolivia is landlocked, located in South America, bordered by five other countries, Peru, Brazil, Paraguay, Argentina, and Chile. The country has very meticulously surveyed borders with every single one of its neighbor countries, and that's kind of partially because they kind of had a lot of wars with every single one of them. Even little Paraguay? Oh, especially Paraguay. That little dude knows how to fight. Now, here's the thing. In the past, Bolivia actually had a lot more land than it did today. In fact, in the past, it had a province called Litoral, which is what the 10th star on the flag is referring to, which was the only area that Bolivia had access to the ocean. Long story short, Chile got that part, Brazil took these parts, and Paraguay got this part. So anyway, hey. Bolivia is divided into nine regions, and technically it has two capitals. La Paz, also known by its official name Nuestra Señora de La Paz, which means Our Lady of Peace, and Sucre, which means sugar. It's a little hard to explain, but essentially Sucre is the constitutional capital where the Supreme Court is located, but La Paz is where all the seats of government reside. The legislative executive branches are both found in the city, and even the president resides in the Palacio Quemado Palace in La Paz. And since China took over Tibet, that made La Paz the world's highest capital at about 12,000 feet or 3,700 meters above sea level. The height is so extreme that typically visitors might find themselves Whoa. short of breathing and might experience altitude sickness, in which the Bolivians will be happy to provide you 
with coca leaves, not cocoa leaves, coca leaves, as a remedy. You can either make it into a tea or chew them up raw and dried. Water also boils at a different temperature at about 88 degrees Celsius, which makes things typically take a little bit longer to cook. Also, the air pressure is so light here that many plasma TVs don't even work, and it has to do with some kind of sciencey reason about the phosphor pods being lit by electrodes. I don't know. It's time to learn some chemistry later! La Paz is a beautiful <laughs> city with a frighteningly majestic snow-capped Mount Ilimani overlooking everything wow, in the southwest. It has a plethora of skyscrapers and monuments. Getting out of La Paz is the tricky part. This glorious urban gem. Man, look at that. that's just crazy. Holy crap. That's insane. Man. But yeah, it looks like uh, I don't know, all this stuff not being able to breathe and the water and the TVs. Man. <laughs> Country trying to beat you up. Good. Is locked and tucked away in the Andes Mountains, so you really only have like two extreme options. If you head west, you have to pass through the driest desert in the world, the Atacama, which looks virtually indistinguishable from the moon at some points with no living plants in sight for miles. And heading east, you have to pass through the mountains where you are so high you can literally see the clouds below you as you drive into the tropical Amazon basin. That's but so before cool. you do, you have to go on the Yungas Highway, otherwise known as the Calle del Muerte or the Death Road. The road at its narrowest is only about three meters wide or the width of an actual vehicle and uh -uh. sits over the ledge of a drop well over 600 meters or 2,000 feet with no guardrail. Nonetheless, this road is still technically a two-lane highway that offers traffic to drivers going in each direction. Every few hundred meters, there are shoulder curbs that drivers can use to allow other cars to pass on the opposite side. Every year, it's estimated that about 200 to 300 people die on this road alone. However, it's wow. funny because this one road has actually become a huge tourist destination of Bolivia. <laughs> yeah, the landscape in Bolivia is is quite intense. Let's talk about that in... Okay, so Bolivia has some of the most contrasting landscapes you'll see in all of South America, let alone the world. First of all, about a third of the country is covered in the rocky, dry, snow-capped Andes Mountains to the west and to the east. After traversing the mountains, you enter the hot, humid, wet pampas or rainforest zone. As the most sparsely populated country in all of South America, Bolivia's interior is widely untouched and uncultivated. In fact, you can even book your own three-day eco-tour that involves getting your own cabin, food, and doing activities like fishing for piranhas, feeding wild monkeys, interacting with crocodiles, and swimming with pink river dolphins, all for about $70. Yeah, the exchange rate is that good wow. in Bolivia. Otherwise, if you stay in the west side, you can still experience some amazing geological anomalies. In the south, in the Potosi province, you reach Salar de Uyuni, the world largest salt flat. In the dry summer months, this creepishly oh. serene area is a completely flat white salt bed that goes on and on for miles to the ends of the horizon. Wow. In the wet winter months, the rains pour down heavily, covering the entire area in a shallow, watery gloss that you can walk in and respectively becomes the world's largest. That's amazing, man. I'd love to go there and take some pictures. That is so cool. Man, you guys got it going on over there the world's largest mirror. Further north, closer to La Paz, you reach Lake Titicaca, <laughs> lake, the highest lake in the world, which they share with Peru. It's kind of funny though, because even though Bolivia doesn't have a coastline, they still have a navy which for the most part patrols over the lakes and the rivers. Agriculture makes up about a quarter of the GDP, even though about 2% of the country is cultivated for crops. Despite the fact that arable land is quite abundant, it's just not used. Cash crops are coffee, cotton, and coca. Not cocoa, coca, the controversial little leaf that when used correctly can help heal sickness and when used destructively can create a little drug known for causing the deaths of many. I'm talking about <laughs> gin martinis. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I'm talking about cocaine. No, but seriously, gin martinis are like the worst thing ever. I don't understand why anybody would have... Sorry, this is about Bolivia again. No, but seriously, the coca leaf has been grown in the country for centuries and has actually gotten Bolivia in a lot of heat, even with some of their friends. Friends we'll discuss about in the friend zone, but first we have to talk about the... Graphic? Yes, I did Bolivia's it! Bolivia's people are pretty much unlike any other people in South America, and here's why. First of all, the country has a little over 10.5 million people, and along with Peru, is one of only two countries in South America in which Amerindians make up the majority, and is the only country in the Americas, let alone the world, in which Amerindians make up over half of the population. Otherwise, about 30% are mestizo, and about 15% are white. In terms of Amerindian okay. subdivisions, there are 30 people groups. However, the largest ones are the Quichua, the Aymara, and the Guarani. Most of the Aymaras and Quichua 
Quechuas live in the west in the Andes mountain range, whereas most of the Guaranis and other Amazon tribal peoples live mostly in the east and in the heavily forested Pampas, which in addition to Spanish make up the four official languages of Bolivia. At the end of the day, however, pretty much everybody speaks Spanish. However, Bolivian Spanish is a little different from the standard Mexican or Spain Spanish that most people are taught. In addition to an accent heavily influenced by indigenous languages, a whole different vocabulary exists. For example, instead of hearing hombre, you might hear varone. Instead of hearing basura, you might hear chorita. And sometimes niño becomes tili. No tengo dinero. Uh. Huh? Estoy yesca? Ah! Now, here's how Bolivia kind of oh, divides itself. Kind of like Belgium, you have two regionally distinct identifiable people groups. The Koyas, or the people who live in the west by the Andes, and the Kambas, or the people that live in the east in the rainforest. I mean, technically there's a third people group called the Chapacos who kind of have their own little thing going on and the people of Tarija identify more with Argentina rather than any people group, but most people fall within the Koya and Kamba categories. These two people groups are quite distinct in their cultures due to the fact that they live completely different lives in completely different atmospheres that they've adapted to. Culture-wise, Bolivia is quite noticeably particular from its neighbors. For one, they are much more heavily influenced by indigenous customs, rituals, and clothing, and even festivals. Interesting side note, you can typically bet on it that a woman is from Bolivia if you see her wearing one of those round, small bowler hats, whereas Peruvian women like to wear the Western hats with the flatter brim. Granted, I'm not saying all Peruvian or Bolivian women look like that, I'm just saying it's a very prevalent look in many of the rural areas. Ha! Good move, Paul. You win this round, but we're watching you. Another funny side note, if you visit La Paz in El Alto, make sure you buy a ticket to buy the Wrestling Cholita show in which women wrestle both men Dang. and each other <laughs> while wearing the traditional clothing. What a great way to make friends. Speaking of friends. Looks like you're having fun. When it comes to diplomatic relations, Bolivia is kind of like, I don't like you, I think, but I'll still give you an embassy. First of all, with the exception of Peru, Bolivia's relations with all their immediate neighbors are all kind of strained a little bit. Paraguay, because of the Gran Chaco area dispute that led to war, then you have Brazil and the Acre War, and Chile with the Pacific War, even Argentina had a few scuffles with Bolivia. Nonetheless, all these countries still have relatively close ties and they all have their own embassies and consulates in Bolivia. Then we get to Israel and things get a little weird because the president doesn't really favor Israel and has threatened to cut ties with them, but many of the Bolivian people are incredibly against this as Israelis make up a huge demographic of the tourism sector. In many places oh. in La Paz, you can even find street signs and posters printed in Hebrew, and many of the locals actually learn how to speak Hebrew to accommodate the visitors. Without the Israelis, they actually might lose a huge potential in revenue. Bolivia's best new friends might be Venezuela and Cuba. This is actually kind of new, considering that relations weren't really that strong before. The reason has something to kind of do with the fact that they all agree with the same anti-imperialist and socialist ideologies, which is kind of funny considering what happened to Che Guevara. In terms of their old best friend, Bolivia might probably consider Peru. They were even for a short period of time part of the same confederation and fought against Chile together. Peru, out of sympathy, has even allowed Bolivia to build a port on the ocean on their land that they can use. In conclusion, Bolivia likes yeah. to call itself the heart of South America, and considering all the amazing, astounding things that you'll encounter, it's not really hard to believe that saying. They just wish they had a coast. Stay tuned, Bosnia and Herzegovina is coming up next. That'd be nice to have a coast, right? I mean... Yeah, <laughs> but dang, like, like that, like what's it called, that road and that you might that you can easily fall off. It reminds me of my family cottage and how it has those small roads, but obviously not as high. And you have to like pull over, let someone by, and oh man, that's cool. The landscape, you know, and this one's just really awesome. You got the mountains, and you got like the rainforest, and then. Weird thing where like phones don't work or some TVs that don't work, and then boiling water you have to be a higher temperature. And yeah, they do have a lot going on. Good job. Uh, so Bolivia, you guys are awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, comment in below if you're living Bolivia. I always find it cool when I do these videos of countries, it'd be nice. You see, I wonder. Sometimes I wonder if people from those countries even watch these videos. <laughs> so, if you want, if you're from, if you live in that country, any country of the videos I do, especially this one since I'm doing Bolivia, just write, you know, I live there in the comments, and that'd be great. Thank you very much. And so I'm just curious. But anyways, thank you guys. Please hit the like and subscribe. And yeah, awesome stuff. I will. Excuse me. I will catch you guys in future videos. Peace.